Uh, let's play this. This is um, uh, Seb Gorka, who I don't know. I mean, look, there's been a lot of things that Seb Gorka has said that is is ridiculous and um, and and pathetic and sad and stupid. That's all. That's true. But I think this clip. And, and, and people can f- correct me if they have a different opinion. But I think this clip shows him to be a liar and a grifter maybe more than any other clip that we've seen because the, the nature of the lie and the nature of the, um, of the grift is pretty apparent here. Um, and, it's not just, and it's not just ideological, right? Like... There's a lot of things he says that is just stupid that I've always attributed to certain ideology. This is one that just leads me to believe like, oh, he is just out and out shamelessly lying and performing in such a way that he knows he's lying. And so has to lay it on a little bit thicker. Like the, you know, this is the classic, um, uh, you know, there's a tendency for people who are, you know, uh, commentators or uh, uh, pundits or, you know, public speakers in any way that um, you don't let them sweet, see you sweat. And sometimes when you really are sweating on the inside, it makes you a little more, a little too effusive. You know, like you're like, <laughs> you're, you know. Sam overselling it a bit, Sam. Y- exactly, exactly. And this is... Um, Red. This is him watching. This is him uh, overselling it. Now, somehow this guy gets on C-SPAN, it seems like, every 15 minutes. And um, one of the problems with C-SPAN is that, you know, you got the hosts. They're always very um, extremely neutral. Oh, we'll get an example Some for that. Some people say you're not being too fair to the Jews, Mr. Hitler. Yeah, exactly. No, that's totally fair. All right, let's go back to the phone let's lines. Let's go back to the phone lines. This is the uh, Democrat line. Here's Daniel next up, Germantown, Maryland, Democrats line. Yes, hello, good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, Mr. Gorka, uh, you previously said that Trump was against these stupid wars, but that found a reason to be in support of regime change in Venezuela. And I found that striking, seeing as how your reasoning was that uh, Maduro is a brutal dictator and he's oppressing his people. However, I don't see the same attitude towards uh, Mohammed bin Salman in Saudi Arabia, a brutal dictator who's definitely brutally oppressed his people, especially the opposition, while in Venezuela, the main figurehead of opposition that's courting the international community that's certainly interested in the Petro state, uh, his main opposition is running through the streets not arrested, not having his head chopped off. <laughs> but being run over by armed personnel carriers, that's okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's, let's, this is the classic leftist <laughs> Howard Zinn, Michael Moore argument of moral equivalency. Who, who is the opposition that Mohammed bin Salman has been active against in Saudi Arabia? They're not pro-democracy demonstrators. It's the Muslim Brotherhood. It's members of the regime who've been supporting groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS for decades. The, the idea that Maduro and MBS, MBS is the first Saudi leader in years who is trying to purge his nation of those who have been funding and giving soccer to the global jihadi movement. I, I, this, this idea that is moral equivalency between Maduro and MBS is asinine. Has, it's, it's all right, pause. Re- and it's okay. So now he, he gets away with this sort of like just general, uh, you know, like generalities, right? Like it, with the, <laughs> the idea MBS is the same as Maduro. There's people being, there's, uh, there's people being run over in the streets. Now, the, the, the first point is sort of, I think, telling. Uh, the, you, you can't name uh, the political opposition that MBS has uh, arrested and put in jails, basically because they never got enough press. They were not free long enough to gain any type of like traction in the uh, in in our news. I mean, there are um, there are many 
people in uh, prison, not not the least of which members of his own family uh, that were, um, um, uh, you know, arrested and uh, put into house arrest or whatnot. Uh, other peace activists, but you know their their names are under the radar. Many, mo- a lot of uh, you know activists. I mean, when he uh, decreed some of those reforms, like women being allowed to drive, he also was imprisoning the woman activists who had pushed for that to happen, specifically as a clear statement that these reforms were a gift from the king, not reform. Right. So he, I mean, Lujain yeah. Halfalau and Mayasa. Al Moody uh, were arrested. They were the ones who were protesting to end the driving ban, and they were once ja- and uh, uh, were uh, jailed for it. Uh, Human Rights Watch uh, spoke about that um, and put out stuff. I mean, there's there's been more, but um, continue. Let's see between Maduro and MBS is asinine, has, it's, it's has, risible. Has MBS put the U.S. in a difficult position by his response, or some might say lack of response, to the assassination, the clear assassination of uh, Mr. Khashoggi? And, you Look, know, absolutely. Now, uh, pause, it, pause it for one moment. Let me just, like, that question is stunning. I get Was it difficult the, that they uh, uh, chainsawed his body apart in the embassy well, in Istanbul? Let me, let me just, just Does that reiterate, put you guys in a difficult position? Let me just reiterate what the question is. Did the murderer, the one who ordered the assassination of uh, Khashoggi, put the US, U.S. in a uh, difficult position by not responding to the charges that he uh, w- w- triggered the assassination of that man. They put, uh, oh, yes, transparency is really an issue mm. here. Kind. Response, or some might say lack of response to the assassination, the clear assassination of uh, Mr. Khashoggi. And, Look, know, uh, absolutely. Uh, it, that, that, that has put us in a difficult position, but at the end of the day, it's not what the Washington Post or the fake news industrial complex would have you believe. Uh, this man, Khashoggi, was an apologist for jihadists. He was an apologist for the Muslim Positive. Brotherhood. He- so we now have him actively saying that the mitigating factor of chopping this guy up in the uh, Turkish embassy when he came for a marriage license, the, it's mitigated by he was an apologist for politics that I disagree with. Let me just say the mitigating factor is all of the propaganda that his murderers spread about him. Allow me to repeat it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. But as if like that in any way implicates the propriety of this guy who was uh, a green card holder in this country. Uh, This man Khashoggi was an apologist for jihadists. He was an apologist for the Muslim Brotherhood. He wasn't an American journalist. He was murdered and that was wrong. But that That event occurred on foreign soil. We need to get to the bottom of it. We need to have transparency. But at the end of the day, the idea that Khashoggi was some champion of democracy, he was an apologist for the kinds of people who are in bed with groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Let's hear from Kyle. I mean, there's just something about that Let's hear from Kyle. (laughs) He knows. He just smeared. (laughs) But isn't that, I mean, isn't that the most naked sort of like just out and out lying that this guy is doing, right? I mean, he knows. There's there's just no, you know, there's no idea. It's just a grift for this guy. Well, that was a common response, actually, on the right to Khashoggi's murder. And the thing was, you know, that was, yeah, (laughs) fair enough. I mean... You know, and it's so, I mean, first of all, yes, Khashoggi did have some connections with some, uh, you know, uh, right wing Muslim politics, including like his former, former connections with the leadership of Saudi Arabia, uh, which is where he kind of got his start. Deserves to die. Deserves to die. Well, and also the other thing is that, you know, the historical button I just want to put on it is that if you wipe out, you eliminate all other political alternatives and only support petro dictatorships and help fund religious extremists. You're going to end up in a situation where religion is the only common modality that people can do politics in a certain place. And and let me just add, um, the participation or really participation may be underselling it a little bit of of what's going on in Yemen uh, by uh, MBS and the Saudis um, is appalling. But I don't expect um, uh, uh, Gorka to uh, critique that at all because of course we're uh so supportive of it now 
we should say that at the very least, uh, the House and the Senate did vote uh, to end the funding. Uh, they were overridden with a veto. They couldn't override the veto. So at least that there is some uh, mitigation to the horror that we are, uh, or at least to the charge that we are uh, fully behind this. We are fully behind it, but at least there is some dissent in our body politic that Thank doesn't you, Bernie. have much value to the people who are dying. Uh, but uh, it is at least um, it's going to make it just so that when uh, when God comes down and releases hellfire, w- maybe not everyone will get burned to a crisp. Hey. Don't burn me. I support Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Exactly. It looks like somebody called in and said to Gorka what we might want. Something oh, let's to... hear that. This is the uh, is this follow up call, yeah. right about after about that? twenty minutes later. Twenty minutes later. Good. Good morning. Um, we this is really uh, directed at you, the moderator. Um, we're living in very precarious times. Um, education for the public is very important. And when I watch C-SPAN, I like to listen to my fellow Americans, uh, the news, the, the journalists that you have on, the experts that you have on. Um, this morning you have on someone who is a known grifter, propagandist, pro- uh, provocateur. And um, I don't think he's going to add anything to the body politic in any kind of way, in any, any kind of positive way. And so I just want to encourage you, just in this very dangerous time where misinformation and disinformation is such a huge problem that you choose your guests more, um, you know, thoughtfully. Uh, this guy is, um, he's dangerous and he likes to be dangerous. He likes to uh, provoke. He doesn't have our best interests at heart. And I don't mind hearing conservative views. I just want them to be accurate, fair, above board. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, and we do, as I told the earlier caller, bring guests on from the left and right, Bill, the center, and... Uh, Bill, this is the left. They, 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 they want to control information. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's totally, I mean, obviously, she's right, but uh, don't you think Gorka was trying to, like, lean into his, like, villain propagandist thing a little bit earlier when he was talking about Khashoggi, like... Mm, this is maybe a message to other journalists that we don't care about freedom of the press. Oh, of course. And uh, I mean, the uh, <laughs> the aggrievement, the, they want to control the information by critiquing yes. uh, your guest selection. They want to give feedback about the information that we give them. That's crazy. 